Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, this is Devendra Prabhu Desai. Uh, I'm here to talk to you, to take you on a journey down memory lane and talk about the champions of cricket um, that have been produced by our favorite city, Mumbai. Uh, this is one of my favorite photographs because it, it uh, encompasses the best of Mumbai, the sport that matters the most in our city cricket, uh, in its most basic grassroots level form. With, with, I think, a bag being used as a, as a stump. And uh, behind, in the background, you can see two symbols of the city. One, an older one, the Rajabai Tower, and the other, the, the Bombay Stock Exchange Building, which represents the modern enterprising uh, Mumbai. So this is one of my favorite uh, photographs. I, I thought it was best to start, start with this. Mumbai, of course, uh, is India's commercial, cosmopolitan, and cricketing capital. Uh, that's the Mumbadevi temple for you in the old days. There are certain statistics that I would like to throw uh, at you. Uh, 79,720 runs, 1,447 wickets, 1,041 catches, 43 stumpings. Now, these are the contributions made by Mumbai cricketers to India in test match cricket. Mumbai batsmen have scored 79,720 runs. This, of course, includes Sunil Gavaskar's 10,122 runs, Sachin Tendulkar's 15,900-odd runs, Dilip Vengsarkar's uh, 6,868 runs, and so on. 1,447 wickets includes uh, Zahir Khan's 300-plus wickets, Karsan Ghavri's 109 wickets, and many more. Catches 100, uh, 1,041 and 43 stumping. So this is the extent of Mumbai's contribution to Indian cricket. And this is, of course, a photograph of... Uh, Maidan cricket in all its glory, where you have uh, often the mid-off of one match standing next to the wicketkeeper of another match. And somehow, in, in all that chaos and all that mess, the cricketers figuring out which match they belong to. That is, that, that is Mumbai for you. You have uh, the Azad Maidan at one point of time had 22 matches going on at one point of time because there are 22 pitches. But somehow, people used to figure out you know, which match they belong to. From Vijay Merchant to Shardul Thakur, the city of Mumbai has produced 71 test cricketers uh, from 1932 to 2020. And this also, this does not include four who only played ODIs and 2020 internationals. So that is a staggering number. The city has given this country 10 captains. Uh, in the upper row from left, you have Vinu Mankat, Pauli Umrigar, Gulabraya Ramchand, Ajit Wadekar. In the bottom row, you have Sunil Gavaskar, Dilip Vengsarkar. Ravi Shastri and Sachin Tendulkar. And then you come to the two captains of the modern era, Ajinkya Rahane, who has led India in a few one-day one day games and a couple of test matches. And uh, then, of course, Rohit Sharma, who is the deputy, uh, who is Virat Kohli's deputy in one-day cricket. So we have given this city 10 Indian captains. There is a word called khadus in the Mumbai language, which has no literal uh, equivalent in English. It is a combination of resilience, stubbornness, courage, and determination. So, khadus equals all these qualities put together. And that, though, that is the quality that Mumbai Kars have exemplified over the years. And Mumbai cricketers have uh, been no exception. We are known uh, for the spirit, the spirit of Mumbai. A much abused term, unfortunately, in recent times. But yes, we have, uh, our spirit is indomitable. Nothing really faces us. And the Mumbai cricketers have, uh, they belong to the same breed. These two schoolboys of the 1980s uh, need no introduction, but they, in a way, um, uh, um, uh, exemplified the, the spirit of the Mumbai cricketer. Vinod Kamli uh, lived in the suburb of Kanjur Mark. He would wake up at dawn, uh, drag his school bag and kid back to the railway station, uh, and board the, the luggage compartment. He was not allowed in the general compartment because of his heavy kit bag. He would uh, get off at Dadar, walk all the way to Shardashram Vidya Mandir, which is a kilometer or so away from the Dada station, uh, be in school from 7 a.m. to 2, 2 p.m. Then he would walk all the way from Shardashram Vidya Mandir to Shivaji Park, again with his school bag and kid bag. There he would bat and bat and bat and bat till the sun went down. Then he would have dinner at a friend's house at 8 p.m. He would then take the train to go back to Kanjur Mark, and then the entire sequence would be repeated the next day. And he did this when he was a schoolboy. Sachin Tendulkar uh, was advised by his coach Ramakan Datsrekar to change schools because the school in which Sachin studied did not have a cricket team. 
So Asrekar sir uh, advised Sachin and his father, uh, Dr. Uh, Professor Ramesh Tendulkar, to uh, shift Sachin to Sharda Shram. Now Sharda Shram uh, was a fair distance away from Sahitya Sahabas in Bandra East, where Sachin lived. And it meant that Sachin would have to change two buses early in the morning to reach school. But he did that because he wanted to play cricket. And uh, like, like Vinod, Sachin also did that when he was a schoolboy. Uh, so they, these two schoolboys of the 80s best exemplify the, the never say die spirit of the Mumbai cricketer. The grassroots level in Mumbai, what is it all about? You have the Giles and Harris Shield tournaments at the inter-school level. Then there are inter-collegiate tournaments. And then you have the Dr. H.D. Kanga League, which can lay claim to being the most competitive club cricket tournament on this planet. Played in the second half of the monsoon on uncovered wickets and sticky outfields. The bowlers have an absolute ball, literally and figuratively, and the batsmen have a nightmarish time. And it is often said that if you score 20 runs in the Kanga League on a pitch, which is uncovered, where the ball is doing all kinds of things, the, the bowlers are making the ball talk. In fact, they are making the ball scream. A, 20, a good innings of 20 in a Kanga League game is equivalent to scoring a century or a double century in proper cricketing conditions. The Kanga League is played in seven divisions, A to G. So based on your performances in one season, you are either promoted or relegated to the uh, in these seven divisions. And as I said, uh, the Kanga League is credited for the impeccable technique of Mumbai's batsmen as they have to battle it out in bowler-friendly conditions. Often the grass is overgrown, the ball gets lost in the slush and the grass. But it's 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 a great feeling to play the Kanga League. It's it's the heartbeat of Mumbai cricket, the nursery of Mumbai cricket. Then we look at the maidans, which are the nurseries of Indian cricket. Uh, to begin with, you have the Esplanade, the oldest maidan, which is now known as the Azad Maidan. At one point of time, it had 22 cricket pitches. And uh, now, of course, more than 10 of those pitches have been lost because of the metro construction. They have said that they will be returning those pitches. Let's see when that happens. So Azad Maidan is one of the nurseries which has produced uh, some uh, great cricketers who went on to do the country and city proud. Then you have the Azad Maidan in, in its modern avatar. You know, all these heights dotting the Maidan. A great sight for somebody like me who worships the game of cricket. There is no better sight than uh, walking or driving past a Maidan and seeing whites dominating the landscape. Then you have the Oval Maidan, the Cross Maidan. The PJ Hindu Gymkhana, the Islam Gymkhana and the Parsi Gymkhana, all three are adjacent to each other on Marine Drive. They have produced some of our greatest cricketers. And then we come to central Mumbai, you have the Shivaji Park and the Gadkar Maidan at Matunga, which is the ground opposite uh, Ruya Podar Colleges. Uh, there was this central Mumbai rivalry in the Kanga League, in Mumbai's club cricket, between Shivaji Park Gymkhana and the Dadar Union Sporting Club, which is located on the Ruya Podar ground, the Dadkar Maidan. They were traditional rivals. Shivaji Park Gymkhana boasted of uh, some great cricketers like Ajit Wadekar, Vijay Manzrekar, Padmakar Shivalkar, Ramakan Desai. But on the other hand, the other union had uh, Madhav Mantri, Vasu Paranspe, Sunil Gavaskar, Dilip Vengsarkar, in later years Sanjay Manzrekar, Vithal Patil. So they were traditional rivals. And matches between Shivaji Park Gymkhana and the other union used to attract crowds in excess of thousands. In, in the good old 50s, 60s, and 70s. Something very interesting happened in the year 2017 where uh, Shivaji Park Gymkhana and the other union, uh, the, the, who had this trans Tilak Bridge rivalry, so to speak, because they are on either ends of the, of the Tilak Bridge in Dadar, they had a reunion and they had a festival match, a six over match. And you had 70 uh, year old uh, uh, individuals over 70 years of age like Ajit Wadekar and Madhav Apte both of whom played for Shivaji Park Gymkhana in their youth. They also participated in this match. They batted for a while. Uh, and the crowd, as you can see, was almost uh, a thousand or, or more than a thousand. So it was. It took you back to those days of the 50s, 60s and 70s where crowds in excess of thousands would dot the maidans to watch this traditional rivalry being played out. These are some of the institutions of club cricket in Mumbai. Uh, we have the other union, Shivaji Park Gymkhana, of course. Then the National Cricket Club, which gave us somebody called Zaheer Khan, uh, Parsi Cyclists, Fort Vijay, Jolly Cricketers, Sundar Cricket Club, Cricket Club of India, Khar Gymkhana, and MIG Cricket Club. So these are some of the uh, most successful clubs in club cricket in Mumbai. And this photograph is of the Dadar Union uh, Club after winning the Purshottam Shield Tournament 
in the mid 70s bang in the middle you can see a very young dilip bengsarkar who is standing dadar union sporting club i mentioned madhav apte a little while back he he played in the kanga league he represented jolly cricketers in the kanga league as well as shivaji park jimkhana for a while and he played the kanga league for 54 long years and he is a witness to several generations of mumbai cricketers uh, he has watched them in action from the field itself in fact he was even uh, someone who saw sachin tendulkar in action in a club match sachin tendulkar and madhav apte were on opposing sides and madhav apte was impressed enough by the boy uh, to invite him to play for the cricket club of india and then you have vithal patel of dadar union he holds the record for the highest number of wickets in the dadar union 759 so these are legends of the kanga league madhav apte uh, madhav apte of course also represented mumbai and india with distinction uh, a very familiar feature uh, on maidans in mumbai is uh, the tent tambu uh, it serves as a combination of a pavilion a changing room a pantry and even a toilet at times you know if there are no arrangements in in the vicinity and then there is this incredible institution called the mumbai cricket grape wine so if a talent is spotted on the maidans you have the umpires you have the groundsmen you have the malis you have the onlookers they spread the word around and the cricketers of course they spread the word around and before even you realize it the city gets to know about a new cricketing talent in the city so a lot of cricketers owe their success owe they are getting noticed very early in their careers to the mumbai cricket grape wine because the word spreads rapidly uh from club cricket we move on to corporate cricket uh, the times of india shield is the premier corporate cricket tournament in mumbai it is played in six divisions with teams being promoted or relegated every year based on performances and this tournament has seen some fierce rivalries over the decades like the one between nirlons and mafatlals in the 70s and 80s near this photograph is of the nirlons cricket team it had sunil gavaskar it had sandeep patel it had surun nayak rahul mankad you know star studded team karsan ghavri mafatlals had ashok mankad brijesh patel and a few other stalwarts and the rivalry was very bitter very fierce in fact sunil gavaskar in uh, one of his books has even written that although his first inclination was to walk whenever he nicked the ball and the keeper had caught it his first inclination was always to walk without waiting for the umpire's decision but there were two teams against whom he would never walk one was pakistan in in matches between india and pakistan and the other was mafatlals in matches between nirlons and mafatlals so you can imagine how fierce the rivalry was between these two teams and there were other prominent organizations like acc air india and indian oil are still going strong uh, promoting cricket at the corporate level so this is very interesting uh, the the uh, one day cricket uh, became a, a hit when it was introduced in england in the 1960s and then of course you had the first world cup in 1975 uh, we have had more than 10 world cups so far and uh, from we have moved on from 60 overs and 50 overs to 2020 cricket but it all began in mumbai there were three gentlemen manohar more ramesh donde and bhalchandra patil they founded the inter club tournament the padmakar taleem shield in 1951 in the memory of their friend prabhakar a padmakar who had passed away and that was the first one day limited overs tournament to be played anywhere in the world so mumbai is a pioneer in that regard and in keeping with recent times this tournament now has shifted to the 2020 format uh, but it was the first of its kind anywhere in the world way back in the 1950s one day limited overs tournament mumbai cricket has its own vocabulary which has uh, developed on the maidan so i'll take you through some of the very interesting terms uh a great shot is often referred to as a kakadi or a chabuk shot are kai chabuk shot marla re teni you know it's the, the, it is it is these terms are used if a batsman go down goes down on a knee to play a shot you know or to to sweep uh, it is called a baithak baithak marli then we come to something very interesting gyanba tukaram if a batsman is always playing and missing at the ball are to tacha gyanba tukaram challe re gyanba tukaram challe that's called gyanba tukaram karanza udavna karanza means fountain in marathi so if a batsman gets a top edge or hits across the line of the ball are then karanza udavna that that's what it is called kholla if a bowler clean bowls a batsman where the stumps are uprooted it is called kholla are tela mi kholla re 
त्या मॅच मध्ये मी त्याला खोलला लागला इफ अ बॅट्समन इज इन हॅज गॉट इन टू अ ग्रुव अँड ही इज टायमिंग द बॉल व्हेरी वेल अँड ही इज जस्ट ऑन सॉंग लाईक संजू सॅमसन वॉज इन येस्टरडेज आय पी एल गेम इट इज लाईक तो अरे तो लागलाय रे काय लागलाय तो सॉलिड लागलाय यु नो दॅट इज द टर्म सोच मारणे इफ अ बॅट्समन इज कॉन्स्टंटली फिशिंग आउटसाईड दी ऑफ स्टम्प इन दॅट कॉरिडॉर ऑफ अनसर्टनटी आउटसाईड दी ऑफ स्टम्प अँड नॅरोली मिसिंग गेटिंग अन एज इट इज कॉल्ड सोच मारणे सोच मारतोय तो सोच मारतोय तडी दिली इफ अ बॅट्समन इज लाईक ऑन दी अटॅक ऑन दी ऑफेन्सिव्ह हॅमरिंग द बोलिंग ऑल ओव्हर इट इज लाईक तडी 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 मास्टर आहे हा तडी मास्टर आहे a pedestrian mediocre bowling attack that is not making any impression on the opposition batsman is called a popatwadi bowling attack and if a, someone is made a scapegoat for the failings or the fault of somebody else it is called bullet khalli are chuk tachi hoti pan mi tacha sathi bullet khalli yaar asa he barobar nahi so these are some of the terms uh, uh, that are synonymous with cricket in mumbai the mumbai cricket association which runs cricket in in mumbai Uh, 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 a member of the bcci was instituted in the year 1930 four years later after the institution of the mca the ranji trophy the premier domestic competition in india was instituted and uh, bombay as mumbai was known then won the trophy in its first year bombay were the first winners of the ranji trophy under the captaincy of lp jay this is a photograph of that first uh, mumbai team uh, to win the ranji trophy and over the years mumbai went on to win the 25th season the 50th season the 60th season the 75th season and several other cities uh, several several other seasons in between out of uh, 85 odd years of the ranji trophy mumbai has qualified for the final 46 times and has won 41 out of those 46 matches so that makes mumbai easily the most uh, successful team in the ranji trophy by a wide margin Karnataka the second most successful team in the Ranji Trophy has eight Ranji Trophy titles to its credit so you have the number one team with 41 titles and the number two side with eight titles that has been the the the, the disparity between Mumbai and other teams now let's take a look at some of Mumbai's greatest cricketers over the decades i will introduce them uh, some of them need no introduction but i will anyway say a line or two about each of them we begin with the holy trinity i mean this uh, any discussion on mumbai's great cricketers has to begin with these three gentlemen on left you have vijay merchant uh, he was picked in the indian team that toured england in 1932 for its first ever test match and he declined to go on the tour because he was protesting against british rule in india eventually he did make his debut and he went on to be considered as a technician of the highest order his technique was impeccable Uh, later on he went on to become a chairman of selectors as well uh, served indian cricket with distinction then of course you have the first batsman to score 10000 runs in test cricket sunil manohar gavaskar and then comes sachin ramesh tendulkar the bharat ratna so we begin with these three uh, individuals who actually needed no introduction now let's take a look at the 40s the mumbai's best cricketers of the 1940s you had madhav mantri uh, a wicket keeper batsman and a very canny captain Uh, he led mumbai to the ranji trophy title a uh, couple of times vinu mankad uh, india's greatest all rounder before kapil dev uh, excelled himself uh, not only in domestic cricket but in international cricket on tours of england and australia uh, rusi modi an elegant batsman he was very much in the vvs lakshman mold the first batsman to score 1000 runs in a single season of the ranji trophy and then madhav apte an opening batsman he made his debut in the early 50s now let's come to the 50s gulab rai ramchand who represented uh, sindh uh, before partition then shifted moved on to india and uh, played uh, for mumbai and also captained india uh, subhash gupte it was said of subhash gupte uh, sir gary sobers the greatest cricketer of all time had said of subhash gupte that he was a better leg spinner than shane warne now coming from somebody like sobers that is high praise unfortunately limited footage of subhash gupte exists uh, vijay manjrekar considered to be a great technician uh, now he, of course he's better known as the father of sanjay manjrekar but a great batsman in, in his own right narain tamhane the wicket keeper batsman it was said of him that he was safer than the bank of england that is what they used to say this is the 50s and 60s where we still uh, evaluated ourselves we gave uh, british yardsticks 
uh, that that a little bit of inferiority complex still existed in the 50s and 60s. So it was said of him that he was safer than the Bank of England. Ramakan Desai, uh, fast bowler from Shivaji Park, he took 50 wickets in his very first season and went on to play for India. Uh, he was known to have a hold over Hanif Muhammad, Pakistan's celebrated opening batsman. And it was said uh, that Hanif Muhammad was not very comfortable facing Ramakan Desai. Then Pauli Umrigar, Pauli Kaka, uh, he held most of the Indian batting records till uh, Mr. Gavaskar came and broke all those records, whether it was the highest number of matches played, the highest number of runs scored, the highest number of centuries. All those records were held by Pauli Kaka. Uh, he played for India for uh, more than a decade and also captained Mumbai with distinction. Dilip Sardesai, now he's better known as the father of uh, Rajdeep Sardesai. But Dilip Sardesai was uh, instrumental in India winning a series in the West Indies for the very first time in 1971. He was called the man behind the renaissance of Indian cricket. Uh, a great batsman, uh, loved to bat and, lo and had uh, his, his run hunger was insatiable. Uh, Farooq Engineer, charismatic wicketkeeper, batsman, uh, a precursor to Mahendra Singh Dhoni and Adam Gilchrist. Uh, he would often open the batting and he was considered uh, good enough to represent the World Eleven on two occasions in the early 70s. He represented the World Eleven against England in 1970 and he represented the World Eleven again against Australia in 1971-72. So he was the premier wicketkeeper, batsman, a charismatic character. Uh, in the in the early 70s and late 60s. And Bapu Nadkarni, one of the uh, most parsimonious bowlers you can ever hope to come across. His figures uh, in a test match against England at Chennai in the 60s read 32 overs, 27 maidens, 5 runs and no wicket. Wicket to wicket, very accurate. Now we come to the 70s, a decade where the first generation of Indians who had been born in independent India had all grown up. They considered themselves, you know, this equal to everybody else. They did not take a backward step. Ajit Wadekar was the captain under whom India won series in the West Indies and England in 1971. He was an attractive left-handed batsman, played for Mumbai and India with distinction. Padmakar Shivalkar, the left-arm spinner, unfortunate to be born at the same time as Bishan Singh Bedi, which is why he uh, could not play for India. Uh, it was difficult to dislodge Bishan Singh Bedi. Uh, but he holds remarkable bowling figures, 8 for 16, 1 6 in the Ranji Trophy final of 1972-73 between Mumbai and Tamil Nadu. A great cricketer, unlucky to play for India. Unlucky to have not uh, played for India. Eknath Solkar, one of the most versatile cricketers you could ever hope to come across and also one of the gutsiest cricketers you could hope to come across. He could do just about anything. You ask him to open the batting, he was there. You ask him to bat one drop, he was there. You ask him to bat uh, in the middle order, he was there. You ask him to field in the suicidal short leg position at a time where there was limited protection for fielders, he was the man for you. You ask him to open the bowling, take the new ball, he was the man. You ask him to bowl spin, he was again the man. So, a versatile cricketer, a gutsy cricketer. And uh, the, the success, uh, he had a huge role to play in the success of our great spinners of the 60s and 70s, like Bishan Singh Bedi, Erapali Prasanna, uh, Bhagwa Chandrasekhar and Srinivas Venkat Raghavan. Of course, they were great spinners, but Eknath Stolkar was there lurking at forward short leg to take to convert half chances into incredible catches with limited protection. You know, so a, a great cricketer exemplifies the typical Mumbai hardworking cricketer. Uh, Balu Gupte, the younger brother of Subhash Gupte, had a great career for Mumbai. Uh, Abdul Ismail, uh, a, a, a new ball bowler. Uh, highly underrated but very deceptive, was an integral part of several Ranji Trophy winning sides of Mumbai. Sudhir Naik, opening batsman, later went on to become a curator, uh, uh, was the, uh, is the head curator even today at the Vankhede Stadium. Ashok Mankad, the son of the great Vinu Mankad, uh, was more successful for Mumbai than for India. Uh, but you know uh, he, he was again, his run hunger was insatiable, a great character. Karsan Ghavri, uh, one of our best all-rounders of all time, uh, came from Saurashtra, shifted to Mumbai, uh, was a, a deceptive left-arm uh, quick bowler uh, and a very effective left-arm lower-order batsman. He could bowl spin as well. And then, of course, Dilip Vengsarkar, the lord of lords, uh, the only non-Englishman to score three test centuries at lords. 
Sandeep Patel, uh, one of the chief architects of the 1983 World Cup winning side, uh, scored some incredible centuries at Adelaide and uh, Manchester against the fast bowlers. Uh, was very much in the Vivian Richards mold. Uh, later went on to become coach of the Indian team, the chairman of selectors as well. Balwinder Singh Sandhu, of course, uh, this one moment has made him immortal. The first West Indies wicket to fall in the 1983 World Cup final was courtesy Balwinder Singh Sandhu, that banana in-swinger that he produced to bowl Gordon Greenwich. Later went on to become a very successful coach of Mumbai. Ravi Shastri declared the champion of champions at the end of the World Championship of Cricket in 1985. Uh, one of India's most successful all-rounders. And today, of course, he is the coach of the Indian team. Sanjay Manzrekar, uh, now better known as a media personality and in his playing days, he was known for his technique. He holds the distinction of the highest individual score by a Mumbai batsman, 377 against Hyderabad in the Ranji Trophy. Uh, Gulam Parker, uh, 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 an opening batsman and a remarkable fielder. Lalchan Rajput was also an opening batsman who later on was the coach of the Indian team that won the first 2020 World Cup in 2007. And Chandrakant Pandit, uh, a highly successful wicketkeeper batsman and later on coach of Mumbai. Uh, there was a lull uh, from 19, uh, from the 1985-86 to 1992-93. There was a lull. Mumbai did not win a Ranji Trophy title despite the presence of many of these stalwarts. A revival happened in Mumbai cricket in the early 90s. And at the forefront of the revival was a fast bowler from England who had shifted to Australia, Frank Tyson. In his playing days, they called him Typhoon Tyson for being uh, extraordinarily quick. He uh, came to Mumbai as part of the BCA Mafatlal fast bowler scheme. And he guided and nurtured not only fast bowlers, but also spinners and a few batsmen. And the results he produced spoke for themselves. Mumbai uh, became a power to reckon with all over again in the early 90s. In the early 90s, of course, you had uh, Vinod Kambli. Well, when you think of Vinod Kambli, you only start wondering what might have been. Uh, he was let down by a combination of inconsistency and a little bit of ill luck as well, getting injured at the wrong time. But yes, what uh, whatever what he could have done for India had everything gone according to plan. Uh, the mind boggles at the thought. Uh, he still has a batting average in Test cricket of more than 50. Uh, Salil Ankola uh, shifted from Maharashtra to Mumbai. Uh, now is into uh, films and television. Paras Mamre, Abhi Kuruvila. So, Salil Ankola, Paras Mamre and Abhi Kuruvila, they were Mumbai's uh, fast bowling uh, uh, superstars of the early 90s. Nilesh Kulkarni, uh, he remains the only Indian to have taken a wicket with his first ball in a test match. Uh, he played for Mumbai for several seasons, also played a bit for India. Today, he heads uh, the International Institute of, Institute of Sports Management. In fact, he's my boss at the moment where I work currently. Uh, Sairaj Bahutule took over 400 wickets in a glorious first-class career. Sairaj was a, was a leg spinner. And then Amol Muzumdar, very much like Padmakar Shivalkar, Amol Muzumdar was also unlucky uh, to have not played for India. He, it was difficult for him to break into a middle order, which had Rahul Dravid at 3, Sachin Tendulkar at 4, Saurav Ganguly at 5, and VVS Lakshman at 6. And he happened to be their contemporary. So... Uh, Amol Muzumdar, uh, one of Mumbai cricket's legends, unlucky not to have played for India. Ajit Agarkar, of course, played uh, in a couple of World Cups, was a member of the uh, team that won the 2020 World Cup in 2007, was my junior in college, uh, uprooted my medal stump at the selection trials and sent my cricketing dreams for a six. But I have since uh, learned to forgive him for what he did because he gave me bragging rights. I could uh, boast in later years. I could ask people, what is common to Sanat Jaisuriya, Saeed Anwar and Devendra Prabhudesai? And the answer was, all three have been bowled by Ajit Agarkar. You know? So I got bragging rights thanks to him. Uh, Vaseem Jafar, elegant opening batsman from Mumbai, a very successful captain of Mumbai, scored over 10,000 runs in first-class cricket. Uh, an opener who should have played more for India. And then Zaheer Khan, over 300 wickets, uh, was uh, a member of the team that won the World Cup in 2011. People remember Gambhir's innings. They remember Dhoni's innings. Uh, but what they do not remember is that Zaheer Khan really set up that match for us with a, a five-over spell in which he considered only three runs and took one wicket. 
had he not come up with that spell sri lanka would have probably got close to 300 in that game and it would have made our task of getting those runs difficult so zahir khan of course one of india's all time greats ramesh pawar uh, often uh, teased over his bulk but one of the greatest off spinners this country has ever produced another individual who should have played more for india but then he had harbhajan singh uh, as a contemporary rohit sharma of course uh, ajinkya rahane rohit sharma the only batsman to score three double centuries in one day cricket uh, he will be in action shortly an hour from now uh, for mumbai indians when they take on uh, kolkata night riders ajinkya rahane uh, has been in and out of the one day team as a permanent fixture in the test team uh, one of our uh, great batsmen and then we come to the present prithvi shaw shreyas ayer uh, who is currently leading delhi daredevils and uh, shardul thakur so this is the who's who of mumbai's cricketers over the decades now let's take a look at some of uh, mumbai's uh, exploits and achievements in the ranji trophy you know 41 victories after all uh, this photograph is is a rare one because uh, you have madhav mantri receiving the ranji trophy from dr rajendra prasad the president of india in the early 50s this was the only instance of the ranji trophy presentation ceremony being held in the rashtrapati bhavan so rajendra prasad presented uh, the ranji trophy to madhav mantri the captain of mumbai uh, mumbai's 41 victories include a staggering 15 consecutive titles from 1958 59 to 1972 73 no other domestic team anywhere in the world can boast of this record 15 wins in a row and during this phase mumbai beat rajasthan seven times imagine how hard it must have been to for rajasthan to have lost seven times to the same team in the final rajasthan tried everything possible to get the better of mumbai they imported players from mumbai the likes of vijay manzrekar and subhash gupte were signed on as professionals by rajasthan to play for them nothing happened one particular season rajasthan went to the extent there was this they were they went to a ridiculous extent there was a character at the cricket club of india in mumbai who they said was a panauti this is mumbai a parlance once again a panauti character if you saw that character you had a bad day so rajasthan actually took this character all the way to jaipur and they made him stand at a place where the mumbai cricketers would have to see him as they walked past you know hoping that at least that the, the uh, panauti would rub off on the mumbai team and rajasthan would win but even that did not work mumbai won anyway and eventually raj singh dungarpur one of uh india's uh, someone who served indian cricket with distinction in several capacities selector coach bcci president administrator uh, a real lover of the game when raj singh dungarpur became president of the cci the cricket club of india he had a replica of the ranji trophy uh, made and put up in the main lobby of the cci you will see that uh, replica of the ranji trophy in the lobby of the cci and his his logic for doing so was that you know i could never get my hands on the original trophy despite so many attempts so i might as well create a replica so that is what uh, this is a photograph of the replica of the ranji trophy which is in the middle of the cci lobby let's take a look at some of the significant ranji trophy wins uh, let's start with 1970 71 uh, it was the season of the boomerang what used to happen uh, was that till then the top uh, you had the ranji trophy being played in a zone come knockout phase so you had five zones in the country west east south uh, north and central the west zone for example had five teams mumbai maharashtra baroda saurashtra and gujarat so the, the west zone teams would play amongst each other and the top team from the west zone in terms of points would then qualify for the knockout stage of the ranji trophy and the same was the case in all the other four zones you had the top team from each of the five zones qualifying for the knockout stage now what happened is that uh, in the annual general body meeting of the bcci in september 1970 the maharashtra cricket association proposed that the top two teams from each of the zones should be able to qualify for the knockouts uh, maharashtra's frustration was understandable because they would invariably lose out on the top position in the west zone by one point or two points mumbai would be ahead of them by just a couple of points you know in most of the seasons and maharashtra would miss out so maharashtra made a very strong pitch to have the top two teams from each of the zones qualify for the knockout stage of the ranji trophy now this proposal was discussed they said okay so this means that the number of matches the number of knockout matches would increase so that's fine 
and ultimately the bcci decided to amend the uh, format and they decided to have the top two teams from each zone qualifying for the knockout phase from that season onwards so 1970 71 was the first season in which you had the top two teams from each of the five zones qualifying for the knockouts now ironically maharashtra happened to top the west zone league in that season which meant that had the old rule been in place maharashtra would have qualified and mumbai would not have qualified but now that the new the rules had changed both maharashtra and mumbai qualified for the knockout stage maharashtra went all the way to the final and in the final they met guess who they met the mumbai team and the mumbai team did not have five as many as five stalwarts ajit wadekar the captain dilip sardesai eknath solkar uh, ashok mankad and sunil gavaskar they were all on national duty in the west indies so mumbai had a team of youngsters captained by sudhir naik the average age of the team was 24 and maharashtra on the other hand were at full strength they had uh, chechandu bode they had hemant kanetkar they had uh, chetan chauhan all seasoned cricketers and uh, the maharashtra cricket association was so confident of winning the match that they had booked a banquet hall in a five star hotel in mumbai anticipating a victory but sadly unfortunately for them mumbai won a team of youngsters from mumbai beat the full strength maharashtra side in the final then we go to uh, 1984 85 it was a match the ranji trophy final featured mumbai and delhi it was played at the vankhede stadium and delhi took the first innings lead now in the ranji trophy if uh, if the match ends in a draw the team that has taken the first innings lead is declared the winner which is why the first innings lead is considered very critical delhi were ecstatic to have taken the first innings lead and kirti azad one of the members of the delhi team uh, said to ravi shastri the mumbai ker that ravi wo jo ranji trophy hai na usko polish karke rakhna kyunki hum delhi use leke jane wale achhi tarah se polish karke rakho usse ravi shastri did not say anything and he went on to reply with the ball uh, delhi were bowled out uh, delhi needed uh, 300 or to win and they were bowled out for 210 or so losing the final by 90 runs Uh, Ravi Shastri took eight wickets in the fourth innings, and Bombay won that final. So Delhi stones backfired in a big way on 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 them. 1990-91 was a heartbreaking final for Mumbai. Uh, this is probably the best Ranji Trophy final of all. Uh, Haryana, uh, led by Kapil Dev, it had Chetan Sharma and then youngsters, was up against a Mumbai team that had as many as seven Test cricketers and two future Test cricketers. Haryana took on Mumbai at the Vankhede Stadium. On paper, it was a mismatch. Mumbai was clearly the dominant side, but then uh, the glory cr- cricket is a game of glorious uncertainties. Haryana took the first innings lead, and Mumbai needed 355 runs to win on the last day. But as was typical of Mumbai, they went for it, and ultimately Mumbai ended up losing the match by only two runs. Uh, Sachin Tendulkar scored a glorious 96. Dilip Vengsarkar scored a glorious unbeaten century. but unfortunately for mumbai it all ended in tears haryana won that final by two runs there's a photograph very good photograph of kapil dev you can see him on the left celebrating with uh, his haryana teammates the 1999 2000 season uh, featured uh, an epic semi final between mumbai and tamil nadu tamil nadu batted first scored 485 so for mumbai to take the first innings lead mumbai had to get 486 sachin tendulkar was on song but he kept losing partners and the eighth wicket fell at 449 so they needed 37 to for the first innings lead and only two wickets in hand now the record books tell you that numbers 10 and 11 both scored zero and sachin tendulkar single handedly took the mumbai team through and he indulged in a lot of mind games with the tamil nadu players so he overheard the one of the fielders telling the bowler that sachin uh, is standing outside the crease so pitch the ball up pitch the ball up and the fielder was obviously communicating with the bowler in tamil uh, and uh, sachin uh, unfortunately for the opposition understood a bit of tamil so sachin could understand what the fielders were trying to communicate with the bowlers so sachin would do the exactly the opposite of what the bowlers were being advised to do and it was only after he had scored a double century mumbai took the first innings lead and mumbai went on to win the match outright that sachin went to the tamil nadu dressing room and told them that you know just i just wanted to inform you 
that I understand Tamil. So I, I could figure out what you were trying to tell the bowlers. And so I was doing exactly the opposite. Cricket is, of course, full of mind games. And Sachin played uh, mind games with the Tamil Nadu team. Mumbai went, uh, qualified for the final where they beat Hyderabad and won the Ranji Trophy. The 2006-07 season was easily the most dramatic in Mumbai's history. Uh, after three matches in the Ranji Trophy, Mumbai had zero points. And people were talking about Mumbai being relegated to the lower division of the Ranji Trophy in the next season. Hyderabad defeated Mumbai outright in the third match of that season. And the Hyderabad the cricket administrators actually celebrated on the edge of the boundary line with a bottle of champagne. They were really rubbing it in. So as the Mumbai players were coming in after losing the match, they were treated to the side of the Hyderabad cricket officials celebrating the victory with, with, uh, with, uh, with champagne. And I think uh, the, this is a story that uh, the Mumbai captain Amol Muzundar said to the Hyderabad cricket administrators, let's see who makes it to the final. And there was a turnaround. Mumbai won all the subsequent matches by huge margins and qualified for the final and they beat Bengal in the final. Uh, so that was a, a, a remarkable journey from the Nadir to the summit. After having no points from the first three matches, Mumbai won its next five matches outright to win the Ranji Trophy. So this, these are the dominators of domestic cricket for you. This, is, this was one of those rare occasions, rare reunion ceremonies about 15 years ago, where the yesterday, today and tomorrow of Mumbai cricket descended. Many familiar faces in this. Sachin uh, and Mr. Gavaskar, Mr. Vengsarkar are there. There are several others as well. Now, this uh, building at Varli, where uh, at the point where the ceiling starts or ends, depending upon which side you are traveling from, uh, it would be safe to say that at one point of time, 79 test centuries lived in this eight-storied building called Sportsfield. So you had Sunil Gavaskar, who lives on the seventh floor with 34 centuries. Uh, Dilip Vengsarkar, uh, Ravi Shastri, Dilip Vengsarkar, 17 centuries in test cricket. Ravi Shastri, 11 centuries in test cricket. Then Pauli Kaka, Pauli Umrigar with 12 test centuries. Gulab Rai Ramchand with two test centuries. And Ajit Wadekar, Eknath Solkar and Bapu Nadkarni with one cent test century each. That comes to 79 test centuries in all. They all lived in this building. Uh, there was also Ashok Mankad, uh, Yajurvendra Singh, uh, Sharad Divadkar, uh, Ramakan Desai. So these were all, these were the cricketers who lived in this building uh, for several years. Many of them have... Uh, unfortunately passed away now. But at one point of time, you had 79 test centuries residing in this building on Verli Seaface. Uh, women's cricket also, just as India, Mumbai pioneered uh, men's cricket in Mumbai, Mumbai also pioneered women's cricket. Alu Bamji, a Parsi lady from Mumbai, can be considered as the pioneer of women's cricket in India. She founded uh, Albis, a club for lady cricketers in the early 70s. And one of her first students was Diana Edelji a legend in uh, women's cricket, in fact, a cricketing legend. Uh, and uh, the Women's Cricket Association of India ran women's cricket in India for several years before it merged with the BCCI in 2006. And the merger with the BCCI opened uh, up a lot of things for women's, women's cricket. They had access to the best grounds, the best facilities, everything. And even the quantity of women's cricket increased uh, substantially in terms of quantity as well as quality later on. Women's cricket in India right now is thriving. They narrowly missed winning the 2020 World Cup earlier this year and also the 2017 50 overs World Cup. But it's only a matter of time before uh, the Indian women's team takes that extra step. This is, of course, Jemima Rodericks, um, another teenage cricket sensation from Bandra. So, Bandra has this thing for producing uh, teenage prodigies. There was someone called Sachin Ramesh Tendulkar in the 80s, and now there is Jemima Rodericks. The unsung heroes of Mumbai cricket, the gurus, the coaches, uh, there are just four of them that I have identified over here. There are many more. Ramakan Dhatsarikar, of course, winner of the Dronacharya Award. Uh, Vasu Paranspe, Vithal Patil, Anna Vaidya. All big names, uh, uh, you know, cricket. They, they, they lived, slept, ate, drank cricket. And they passed on that enthusiasm, that passion to their students. Mumbai has been fortunate to have some great administrators. This is a photograph that I... Uh, I was lucky to get of Mr. S.K. Vankhede, who uh, built the Vankhede Stadium and was the president of the Mumbai Cricket Association uh, for several years with one of his successors, Mr. Sharad Pawar. Uh, this photograph was obviously clicked in the 1970s. We have had some great administrators.
traders over the years. The northward shift in Mumbai is continuing. So if South Mumbai was earlier the nursery for cricket, then it shifted to central Mumbai, the other union, Shivaji Park in the 60s, 70s. And now you find a substantial number of cricketers coming from the satellite towns and the outskirts of the city. And the Mumbai Cricket Association has done what it could to, end, to cut down the traveling time of cricketers from the outskirts to the main city. The Sachin Tendulkar Jimkhana has been built at Kandivli and a recreation center has been built in BKC with modern cricket training facilities. These are, of course, the international venues of Mumbai. You have Bombay Jimkhana, where the first test on Indian soil was played in 1933-34. The Brebon Stadium, which was Mumbai's main cricketing venue till 1973. Then you had the Vankhede Stadium from 1974 onwards. It underwent a complete makeover for the 2011 World Cup. Uh, and then uh, you have the D.Y. Patil Stadium at Nehru, which is uh, a magnificent state-of-the-art facility. It, in fact, hosted uh, matches of the FIFA Under-17 World Cup in 2017, football matches. It has also hosted two IPL finals in 2008 and 2010. And it's only a matter of time before uh, this ground hosts uh, an international cricket match. What are the challenges for Mumbai cricket? Uh, several teams which were considered lightweights not very long ago uh, have now won the Ranji Trophy in recent times, like Gujarat, Rajasthan, Saurashtra, Vidarbha. They have been doing very well in the Ranji Trophy. It's a great sign for Indian cricket, of course, that the so-called uh, whipping boys of the past have become superpowers. It, it, it uh, is an outcome of the work done by the BCCI in terms of infrastructure development. Mumbai is no longer dominating the Ranji Trophy as it used to in the past. There was even a time when seven to eight members of the of the Mumbai Ranji of, of from Mumbai were part of the Indian team. The Indian eleven in Test matches in the fifties had seven or eight players from Mumbai alone. So that is now a thing of the past. So it can be said that the rest of the country has caught up with Mumbai as far as cricket is concerned. Uh, there are some practical issues uh, that uh, uh, Mumbai's children are conf confronted with. The kids in the cities today have more entertainment and recreational options. Uh, my parents had to drag me home at 7 p.m. But I have to push my children out of the house to play. This is an outcome of being part of the digital age. Uh, the open spaces where we played as children have been taken up by cars. So there's a practical problem here. Where will the kids play, even if they want to play? So the space has all been taken up by cars. But uh, the future, it is, uh, is promising. Hopefully, uh, there is reason to be optimistic. Children will be so bored of the ongoing lockdown that they will rush outdoors when it is lifted in totality and lifted for good when we are past this crisis. And there, they will find ways to play like their parents, uncles, and aunts used to. And the khadus instinct that they would have inherited from their elders, which they would have surely inherited from their elders, will reassert itself. I am confident. Thank you very much. That brings me to the end of this talk. I hope uh, you found it interesting. Great. Thanks. Thanks a lot, Devendra, for that amazing talk. Great amount of trivia uh, you know, that came out in terms of the various stories that uh, you mentioned. So we have loads of questions that have come in yes. as well. Okay, so the first question uh, I'll just start off with. Uh, Kevan had, so Kevan has multiple questions, of course, here, but we'll ask the first one from when you started. Uh, his question was, would you consider Zaheer Khan a Mumbai cricketer given that he grew up in Malegaon and debuted for Baroda? Uh, his uh, father brought him to Mumbai. His father said that I'll give you a year to... Uh, for you to pursue your cricketing ambitions. So he played a lot of tennis ball cricket in Sri Rampur, where he's from. But he was nurtured and honed as a cricketer on the Maidans of Mumbai, at the National Cricket Club to be specific. So he can be justifiably called a Mumbai product because Mumbai, he honed his cricketing skills and started playing proper red ball cricket in Mumbai. So he's very much a Mumbai product. Uh, the next question is from Arhan. His question was... Uh, uh, wasn't Rohit Sharma born in Nagpur? How did he then get associated with Mumbai cricket? No, he was. He lived in Dombuli, then he shifted to Boruli. So, although he was born in Nagpur, he is a Mumbaiker. His parents oh. were Mumbaikers. Right. So, he uh, was one of those who have who used to commute long distances. And of course, today he has made it big. Yeah. yeah. Uh, there's a question from Parvez, which is uh, a little of, on the side track. He asks, 
why and how did the number of balls as 8 per over come into being the kanga league had this rule of 8 balls uh, it was it uh, the kanga league was instituted in 1940s so for some reason they had this 8 ball rule maybe they wanted to be different from the other tournaments australia had an 8 ball over even in international cricket till the late 70s so kanga league had had this 8 ball rule and uh, just the question again on the kanga league uh, which is from pradeep he says uh, why has kanga league lost its sheen in the recent years you know there's uh, the the, uh, the issue here is that uh, earlier the top cricketers of the time used to play the kanga league you know and that is the best way in which uh, one generation can pass uh, can hand over the baton to the second generation because when you are a youngster and you are sharing a dressing room sharing a tambu in fact not a dressing room sharing a tent with say your hero somebody who has been playing at the international level that rubs off on you and that's an inspiration in itself you you uh, get to learn a lot on the job so to speak unfortunately in recent times uh, cricketers the top cricketers of mumbai have preferred to uh, go abroad to play league cricket to england places like england and uh, there are some practical issues also imagine uh, sachin tendulkar turning out for say mig club or cci for example on an open ground like the azad maidan or you know they'll be mocked so there are some practical issues as well but one of the reasons the kanga league uh, has is no longer uh, what it used to be is that uh, the the seniors the stars are no longer rubbing shoulders with with the youngsters uh next from commander mohan narayan he asks how did bitwell patil get the nickname marshal yeah it was a dadar union tradition to give uh, nicknames so vasu paranspe who was the captain at dadar union for several years he had a knack for giving nicknames in fact vasu paranspe is the person who nicknamed mr gavaskar sunny the world known him as sunny gavaskar that nickname was given by vasu paranspe so you had uh, milind rege being uh, i think milind rege's nickname was minky or something at dadar union uh, dilip vengsarkar was nicknamed colonel because his batting style was similar to colonel ck naidu's uh and there was uh, vithal patil who was nicknamed marshal so the other union had that tradition of giving nicknames all right uh, uh, a lot of questions and and uh, you know great wonderment that came in from the lingo slide that you had presented a uh, question from kevan is any idea about the origins of these terms that are used in lingo Uh, they just uh, they just evolved on the maidans so you know one stray comment here and there and that was quickly you know adopted by the others it's 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 like that all the mumbai slang it's the same thing you know they just somebody came up with that and uh, it was picked up by others and then it it spread yeah how things become viral these days yes yes um uh, so the question next is from parvez he says uh, what what do you refer to both mediocre batting and bowling attacks i think it is more referred to to uh, the, the reference is more to bowling attacks you know popatwadi bowling hai uh, batting not so much uh, the, uh, the term is used more for, uh, for bowlers popatwadi bowling correct uh, this is a comment from pradeep he says you forgot uh, pata wicket for flat wickets pata is an indian term it's not a mumbai specific term it's it's pata is uh, <laughs> i have avoided that because it's it's used all over the country uh moving on from there uh, another question from commander narayan is uh, is it true that the road in front of cci now named dinsha vatsa was to be named after anthony de mello one of the founding members of B- bcci uh, i am not sure about this i i can't confirm this because i am not sure about this but yes anthony dimelo was one of uh, he was one of those responsible for uh, the birth of the bcci in fact the inception of the bcci he was the first secretary of the bcci and also he went on to become a president of the bcci and the trophy uh, that is given to the winner of a test series between india and england on indian soil is still referred to as the anthony dimelo trophy so you have the patodi trophy which is given to the winners of series between india and england played in england and you have the anthony milo anthony de milo trophy given to winners of series between india and england in india all right all right uh, when you were mentioning uh, mumbai's fan, finest parvez had a comment uh, on uh, talking about ramakant parker if does he also i'm not parker 
Ramakant Parker. Ramakant, so he said Ramakant Parker. I'm not sure. No, there was a cricketer called Ramnath Parker who okay. uh, played for the other union, and uh, he played a couple of Test matches for India as well. In fact, uh, Ramnath Parker and Mr. Gavaskar uh, came up with, set a very special uh, distinction. They opened the batting for India in in the Test series against England in 1972-73. and it was probably the only or one of the few instances the only instance in indian cricket of course of the same opening pair going in for their country uh, their uh, ranji trophy side mumbai their zone the west zone and also their club the other union it was one of those rare uh, instances and ramnath parker was uh, also a, a, a great fielder patrolled the covers all right thanks moving on a uh, question from kaiwan is Mumbai produced great coaches like Sandeep Patel and Chandrakant Pandit who worked wonders for weaker teams like MP. Why didn't MCA utilize their services? They did. Chandrakant Pandit was the coach of Mumbai. Uh, he he was coach when Mumbai won the Ranji Trophy on a, at least three seasons, as far as I can recall. He was the coach in two thousand two, two thousand three, and the subsequent season when Mumbai won the Ranji Trophy. Sandeep Patel uh, did uh, coach. Uh, he captained and coached Madhya Pradesh. uh he uh, wasn't sandeep patel has not yet been the official coach of the mumbai cricket team so far but then you never know yeah uh moving on the next question uh, is again from kaiwan he said there's something about the upcoming mumbai stars mushtaq khan sons and arman jafar yes i did not uh, feature arman jafar and uh, sarfraz khan for the simple reason that they still had to make their mark at the international level so if you saw the the the, the mumbai cricketers i uh, focused only on those who played international cricket and uh, and did rather well and also uh, people who were genuinely unlucky padmakar shivalkar and amol muzumdar who should have played for india but did not but could not arman jafar and sarfraz khan's time will come very soon uh Next one is from Parvez. He's asking, didn't the grand old man of cricket, Deodhar, have any role in Bombay cricket? Uh, although he no, he uh, no, he was Maharashtra. Professor D. B. Deodhar was uh, Mahara was from uh, represented Maharashtra in the Ranji Trophy, led Maharashtra to Ranji to the Ranji Trophy title on a couple of occasions in the late thirties. Uh, went on to live till the age of hundred and two, but he was from Maharashtra. Uh, Kevan was very fascinated with the story uh, on women, women's cricket, and uh, he was asking where was Albies. If you could tell us more about this interesting story. CCI. If there's any uh, any other tidbit, if uh, you know, he'd be great. Uh, he'll be. Yeah. So uh, as as I mentioned, one of her first students, the first batch had Diana Edelji, who took over a hundred wickets in international cricket. She was part of the panel. Uh, set up by the bcci to right the wrongs in indian cricket in 2015 16 so she is uh, you know the the stormy petrel of of indian cricket uh, she has done a, rendered a remarkable service for indian cricket so she was one of the first students there yeah okay moving on a uh, question from parvez is did any of the gurus represent india uh no Uh, the, the ones that i mentioned did not represent india so ramakant arsrekar uh, vs patel that is vithal patel uh, anna vaidya and uh, vasu paranspe they did not represent india but of course ramakant arsrekar we all know who came from his uh, school uh, vithal patel was the, the coach of sanjay manjrekar just one of i'm just giving you one of the many names anna vaidya was sandeep patel's coach vasu paranspe of course captain at dadar union for several seasons a whole lot of mumbai and indian cricketers were guided by him in their formative years uh the question that came in from parvez next was around the the triangular the quadrangular and pentangular but uh, parvez this is actually covered by devendra in his previous talk that took previous talk yeah, yeah yeah so so that's where he got into more into those details uh there uh next question is from harsha uh is being asked according to you how much of bombay culture has influenced indian cricket over the years for good very much i think uh, mumbai has if mumbai cricket uh, goes down then indian cricket goes down it would be safe to say that and i think the the the, the patience the the technique you know the waiting give the bowler the first hour and then you can have the next five hours to yourself that principle 
um, uh, Mumbai has influenced Indian, Indian cricket in a big way. So, you know, somebody like Rahul Dravid, for example, or uh, before him, Mohinder Amarnath. They have Vijay Hazare, who played for Maharashtra and Baroda. They are very much in the Mumbai mold of batsmen. And Mumbai's batsmen have often uh, saved the country several times and won matches as well. Uh, so yes, Mumbai has had a, a, a huge role to play in the in the evolution of Indian cricket. I mean, 71 test cricketers, that speaks for itself. Uh, just a little bit more, uh, Commander Narayan wanted to know about the Parsis in Mumbai cricket and their contribution. Yeah, this is also something that I had covered last time. Uh, but yeah, the Parsis were the first Indian community to take to cricket. They set up the Orient Cricket Club at the Esplanade Maidan in 1848. And uh, the Parsis being an affluent community, they undertook two tours of England in the, in the 1880s. One in 1886 and the second in 1888. Uh, they went to England. They also then uh, returned and they, uh, they, they were good enough for the British in Mumbai to set up an annual presidency match against them. In 1892, an annual presidency match was instituted between the British and the Parsis. Uh, and that, of course, grew. The Hindus entered the scheme of things in 1907. So it became a tri triangular series. Then the Muslims entered in 1912. It became a quadrangular series. And then the rest, which was Christians and Anglo-Indians and Sikhs, they entered in 1937, making it a pentangular cricket tournament. So that is how the, 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 the presidency match became a triangular, quadrangular and then pentangular. So the Parsis are the pioneers in industry, commerce, politics, also in cricket. One right. of their best cricketers of the 19th century was Dr. Mehelasha Pavri, who was a fast bowler. A, doctor, a dentist by profession and a fast bowler. So the next question is from Amar. He asks how you look at Mumbai cricket now since last four or five years the performance is dipping. Don't you think ex-India players should be roped in as coaches? Ex-India players, yes. Uh, they, they, they will invariably, I think, uh, examine that, or explore that option. In fact, just a week ago, they interviewed candidates for the coaching job. I think it's just a passing phase. Uh, there are highs and lows. We had a low even in the late 80s where you had some, some of the biggest names in Indian cricket playing for Mumbai. So it's a passing phase, I feel. As I said, the rest of the country has caught up with Mumbai. But there's no reason to feel pessimistic. It's only a matter of time before the city bounces back. Uh, what has happened, I think we should look at the bigger picture. Uh, the success of uh, teams like Vidarbha and Gujarat. Saurashtra is sensational, I feel. It just shows that Indian cricket is in robust health. And uh, Mumbai, you have Ro Rohit Sharma, Ajinkya Rane, Prithvi Shaw. Uh, they are more or less in the Indian team, Shardul Thakur. So it's only a matter of time before they inspire the current lot of youngsters to make it big, I feel. So it's, it's a passing phase. Next question is, he's asking, is the time shield still continuing given that companies don't employ cricketers anymore? There are some companies that still do. So the Times of India shield is still very much continuing. And uh, the final question, which is from Commander Narayan, he's asking, if Ramesh Nagdev had not quit prematurely, Gavaskar would have made his debut match later. Is that true? Uh, as uh, Navjot Singh Sidhu used to say, if if and butts were pots and pots pans, and pans. There would be no... they would be no... <laughs> so there would be no tinkers. Uh, yeah, Ramesh Nagde was a gifted player. In fact, Mr. Gavaskar had once written that there were two batsmen he knew who were capable of hitting the first ball of the match for six. One was Shrikant. And the other was Ramesh Nagdev. So, yes, he was a talented cricketer. But I think it would be wrong to say that had he uh, uh, been there, Gav Mr. Gavaskar would not have played for India. I mean, it's, it, this, this can be, uh, this is only conjecture. I think both together would have uh, made for a great opening partnership. Imagine one person keeping one end going and the other going ballistic at the other end. Uh, they would have got India to a flying start on several occasions. It, 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 is, it is unfortunate that he uh, went to California. Yeah. All right. Uh, so that's all that we have, uh, Devendra, for uh, today. Uh, thanks again so much for uh, taking us through this lovely journey, especially uh, with respect to Mumbai cricket.